Okay, folks, so whenever I say yo-ho, yo-ho, I need you to say a pirate's life for me as loud as you can. And then I need you to pay attention and listen up, okay? You ready? Let's practice it. Yo-ho, yo-ho, a pirate's life for me. One more time. Yo-ho, yo-ho, a pirate's life for me. Brilliant stuff, folks. How's it going? It's Pat here from Asphalt Green's Recess Enhancement Program. I'm here with another instructional video for you, this time for our game, Pirate School. Now, before we hop into the details of the game though, it's important that we start off the way we always do, and that is with the safety check. So, before we start any game, and after we finish any game, we always wanna make sure that we and our students are washing our hands with soap and water for at least 20 seconds. We also want to make sure that at no point during the game, anybody's hands are going anywhere near their faces. And if anybody ever has to call for sneeze, well, they can just dab and call for sneeze right into their elbow. We also want to make sure that at all points during the game, everyone is maintaining at least six feet of distance between each other. That way, everyone can be properly social distanced, okay? So, if you've completed your safety check and you feel comfortable about moving on, just give me a yeah. Let's hear them. Yerk! And we'll hop into the details of the game. So it seems like we have a good few wannabe pirates and maybe a few actual pirates out there who are ready to get started. So as mentioned, the name of the game is Pirate School. What's the name of the game? That be right, it be Pirate School, it is your. That's right, Pirate School. And it's a great game for students in kindergarten up through fifth grade or students within that age range or ability level range. When thinking about where to play this game, well, there's a few things you'll need to take into consideration. This is one of our games that has stations and each station is going to have a specific pirate school activity attached to it that students will need to complete when they're at that given station. During the game, students will be rotating from station to station, performing all of these different activities and they'll continue to do that until you've decided they've had enough of pirate school and they're ready to become full-fledged pirates. Then the game will end. Now we have eight activities for you, which means that you can set up up to eight stations, but we want to ensure that there is a safe environment throughout this game, okay? So our rep recommendation is that stations should never have more than two or three students at them at any given time. And what that means, therefore, is that each station should be set up so that two or three students can perform the specific activity while remaining at least six feet apart from every other student at that station. So, with all of that information in mind, I want you to think about where you can play this game safely, okay? And like I said, we have up to eight stations for you. But if you can't fit eight stations, that's totally okay. You can set up four, okay? The important thing is that everybody is safe at all times. So if you have a playground and you can fit all eight stations, fantastic. But if you have a hallway, but you can actually fit four stations in there and students can perform the activity safely, then go for it, okay? You know your, your space is better than us. You know your students better than us. So whatever you feel is safest, Go with that, okay? And this game can be adjusted uh, accordingly. Speaking of safety too, students won't need to touch any equipment during this game. So there won't be any sharing of equipment whatsoever. The only equipment that will be needed will be used for the setup of the activity station. So we're all good on that front. So as always, safety is covered with this rep game, all right? and. I always like to think that fun is a byproduct of safety, so we're going to have a fantastic time. Toss in the rep guarantee and it's gonna be out of this world, all right? But let's get into the details of the game so that I can really show you why this game is out of this world, okay? And as we always like to do when discussing details, we're going to rep it out. So we'll start with R, ready, and talk a little bit about how we can get ready for pirate school. So. The first thing you're going to want to do in order to get ready for the game is map out your play space and designate your boundaries. As mentioned, this game is going to have stations and these stations should be large enough 
for two or three students to complete the specific activity for that station while remaining at least six feet apart from every other student at that station, okay? So take a look at the play space you have and see how many, just kind of visualize, you know, how many stations you can realistically and safely fit into that play space, okay? Once you've decided, you're like, okay, maybe I can fit four, or I think I can fit six, whatever the number might be, just visually mark off where you want the boundaries for those stations to be, okay? Once you've done that, you can move into a safety sweep. So you can just do a quick safety sweep of the whole area and remove any items that might pose a safety risk to students during the game and have a think about how you're gonna work around any items that maybe can't be moved. After completing your safety sweep, you can begin to lay out equipment. For this game, you'll need cones or tape to mark off the boundaries of every activity station, okay? Then you're going to need to grab individual cones and task tents equal to the number of stations you have, okay? So if you have six stations, you, have, you should have six individual cones and six task tents that can go over those cones. You should then lay out those cones and task tents at every individual station, so there's one at each, and then you can grab the pirate school activity sheets and insert those into the task tents, okay? That way, when students head to an activity station, they're going to be able to take a look at that activity sheet. And on that activity sheet, there are going to be instructions for how to complete the specific activity for that station, as well as an illustration showing them what that activity should look like, okay? What might also be helpful for you would be to number each of the activity stations, okay? So you can have one, two, three, you know, so on and so forth, however many stations you have. That way students will know where to rotate once their time is up, okay? So, once you have laid out all of the equipment, you're like, okay, everything seems safe. You know, it seems like two or three students can perform their activities while remaining six feet apart from one another. Every station has a task tent and they have their task tent inserts. And you know, I've got the numbers down so students are gonna know where they're going. Well, then you're ready to have the students gather on up around you, all right? And you can use the attention grabber that I used at the beginning of the video in order to help you gather them up. So. You can say to them, when I say yo-ho, yo-ho, you say a pirate's life for me, and then listen up, okay? So, yo-ho, yo-ho, a pirate's life for me. And then you can say, now I need you to say it as loud as you can. Yo-ho, yo-ho, a pirate's life for me. And you can say, brilliant stuff, folks. How about we gather on up and stand six feet apart from one another, because I'm gonna explain an awesome game to you called pirate school. And then you'll be ready to move on to the E portion of the rep model, E, explain. Now, when explaining a game, it's always important to use a loud and clear voice. That way, all students can hear and understand you. You also wanna make sure that you're asking students specific questions about the instructions you're giving while you're giving them. That'll give you an opportunity to check for understanding and clarify anything that maybe you weren't super clear on. A question we would suggest you ask for this game, say, would be, well, how long do you have at every station? Now, that question will make a little bit more sense as we talk through the instructions. So I'm gonna do that right now. And if you haven't already, you can go to our website, download the instructions for Pirate School and download the activity sheets for Pirate School, and you can follow along while I'm talking. So the first rule of Pirate School is something that you've already had students do and that is to gather on up and stand six feet apart from one another. Once students have gathered though, you can begin the game by starting in on a bit of a storyline, okay? So you can say, ahoy mateys, it is I, Captain Coach of the SS Asphalt Green, and I heard that there are some promising pirate recruits around here. Now, I need a new crew for my ship, and I think you've got the makings of a fantastic crew, but, I need to be sure. So, I think we should head to pirate school. After completing your introduction, you can have students point to every activity station in the room. You can explain to them that each activity station is a different pirate classroom, and that at each pirate classroom, they will be practicing a different pirate activity. You can tell them that they will know what pirate activity they are to practice by looking at the task tent for that pirate classroom, okay? 
And in that task tent, there will be an activity sheet that will have the name of the activity, the instructions for how to complete the activity, and then an illustration showing them what the activity will look like. You can explain to them that they will be rotating from pirate classroom to pirate classroom, and that they will be practicing all of the different pirate activities in order to become full-fledged pirates, right? They need to practice everything. So, you can tell them that they will have 60 seconds at every pirate classroom, and that they are expected to do the activity for the entire 60 seconds, okay? They will know when it's time to pause and move on to the next station when they hear yo-ho, yo-ho, because they will know that they need to pause and say, a pirate's life for me, and listen up, all right? So you can tell them that is the call. That's when they need to switch, all right? And then once they hear that call, you can tell them that they will just be moving on to the next station, all right? So if they're at station two, they're moving on to station three. And if they're at station three, they're moving on to station four, all right? Now, it's important to remind students that they should always be at least six feet apart from one another at all times, and you should tell them that they, there should never be more than two or three of them at any given pirate classroom at any given time, okay? Now, once students have gone through the entire cycle, or you know they've gone through it twice, because again, you're the one who's deciding when this game will end, right? Well, you can just say yo ho yo ho and they'll all say a pirate's life for me and then have them gather on up standing six feet apart from one another and you can tell them that they have now graduated from pirate school and become full-fledged pirates and that they are now able to join your crew and then to celebrate you can have a little pirate dance party all right and that is pirate school so that's an explanation of the rules for pirate school so how about now we move on to the final portion of the rep model, P, play, and talk a little bit about how we can play the game so students are abiding by the rules. And also how we can play the game so as to keep the game interesting and engaging for all students. Before we can do that though, I think we need to gather on up. So, yo ho, yo ho, a pirate's life for me. Yo ho, yo ho, a pirate's life for me. Can I have everybody gather on up and stand six feet apart from one another? Brilliant stuff. Thanks, folks. So, even before you begin playing, we would suggest that you have all of the students walk through all of the stations so that they have an opportunity to read the different activity sheets. This will give them an opportunity to internalize what it is that they'll actually be doing, okay? It's because they'll see the instructions and they'll see the illustrations, so they'll know, oh, okay, so this is kind of what I'm getting myself into for the next short while, all right? To make them even more comfortable with what it is they're about to do, once they've finished their walkthrough, you can have them gather on up, standing six feet apart from one another, and you can practice each different pirate activity with them, okay? So you can practice starfish jumps, you can practice jumping jack sparrows, just to get them that little bit more comfortable with what it is they're going to be doing, okay? Once you have finished your practicing, you can then move into the game, right? And we would suggest that you throw in some gentle reminders about remaining six feet apart from one another at all times, and then some gentle reminders that there should only ever be two or three students at any given station at any given time, okay? Students can get excited. They might want to move on to a different activity. They might want to be closer to their friends. You know, they just might be excited while performing the activity that they forget about personal space, right? So it's always helpful to give them some of those reminders. It's also important to keep an eye out for any students that might be getting frustrated with a specific activity or any students that might be getting bored with a certain activity, all right? So you want to keep an eye out for those things while the game is going on. If you notice that is happening, it's okay to go up to those students and offer an alternative activity, okay? So say a student is struggling with starfish jumps, but you notice they were really, really loving jumping jack sparrows. Well, you can just head on up to them and say, hey, how about you give me some jumping jack sparrows because I noticed you were really, really great at them, right? And I think we need a jumping jack sparrows expert on this boat. Do you think you can do those for me, right? 
And the same thing if, you know, if a student is like, I am so bored with starfish jumps. I just know how to do these and I don't even want to do them anymore. Maybe there's an activity that was really challenging them and that they were having a lot of fun with, right? Maybe they, they found jumping jack sparrows also to be absolutely fantastic, right? Well, you can offer that activity to them and you can say, how about you give me some jumping jack sparrows then? And see, and count them up, see how many you can do, all right? Offer them a bigger challenge, right? The reason for this, right? The reason for having a backup activity or an alternative activity for students is because it's not so much the type of activity that students are doing that's important, right? It doesn't really matter what it is that they're doing. What does matter is that they're getting active, active they're having fun, and that they're feeling a sense of accomplishment, okay? That's what we want students feeling throughout the game. And if the way that we can get them to that point, right, of feeling all that, is by just changing something up, well, let's do it, okay? Let's go for it and let's make that happen for them. Now, if you were thinking of mixing it up for your students, well, we just have a, a couple of suggestions for you. Maybe you've gone through one full rotation and you're like, on this next rotation, I wanna add in a little something extra, okay? Maybe you can have students row the boat between stations, okay? So when they're moving from station to station, they're just performing the row, row, row the boat activity, okay? Just doing their arm circles. Then if you're like, ah, actually we've done that and we wanna add in a little bit more of a challenge, okay? Well, you can just lengthen the time that students spend at each station. So initially they're spending 60 seconds at each station. Well, maybe you up it to 120 seconds. So they're spending two full minutes at each station, okay? That'll get them even more active. It'll challenge them even more. And it might get them having even more fun, all right? So those are just a few suggestions we have for you, but if there's anything that you feel you can add into the game that's going to, you know, get students more active, get them having more fun, please, please do it, okay? So long as it's safe, it's okay by us. So that's the end of our tips and suggestions list, which means that we are at the end of the rep model and therefore the end of the video, okay? Before we head on off, I think we need to gather up one last time, so, Yo ho, yo ho, a pirate's life for me! Yo ho, yo ho, a pirate's life for me! And can we gather on up and stand six feet apart from one another? Brilliant stuff, folks. I just wanted to gather you on up to say thank you for following along. I hope you found this video useful, and I hope you have a great, great time playing pirate school with all of your students, all right? Just stay tuned for a few more videos coming from us over here at Asphalt Green, all right? And we'll catch you the next time.